Hey, there we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are out there. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. Today, today is January 10th, 2022, and this is C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz. We're going to be writing a little bit of code today. We're going to be chatting with you out there, talking about what's new in tech. It's been about a month since we've been together, thanks to, thanks to the holidays here at the end of December, beginning of January. It's so good to be back with you. I'm, I'm really looking forward to having another, another beginner-friendly discussion, talking about C Sharp and different ways that we can use that programming language to do cool things. And today... Today, I've got a little bit of a doozy here for you. This is going to be a really fun stream because we're going to get in and we're going to talk about how to take what we've learned around C Sharp Basics and turn it into a Discord chat bot. Now, some of you that are watching on, on Twitch and YouTube live now, you know what a Discord chat bot is. You've been out there. You've been working with Discord. It, it's another online streaming chat service like Slack or Microsoft Teams, where you can go and hang out with your friends and, and chat about different things, or you can open up a, an, audio, uh, an audio bridge, effectively, and everybody can talk, and you can hear each other talking, and you can even share screens, put up your cameras, whatever. It's a fantastic little service that you can get engaged with. You can try out at discordapp.com, and today, we're going to build our first app. Now, importantly, I'm not going to focus so much on the Discord features. I'm going to show you how to get in, where you can learn more about the Discord features. I want to focus on some of the other C Sharp features that you may want to know you're going to need in order to effectively build that application so that it will run on your machine and start answering and interacting with chat. That's, that's the goal today. That's where we're going to go. Let me say hello to the chat room over here, and we'll get in. I've got 40 minutes on the clock here, so we can do a little bit of open Q&A, a little AMA as we're going along here. I've got folks connected in from both YouTube and Twitch. So let me run down the list here. Let's say hello to folks. Make sure that we're all set up for having a good time here today. Carl Edwards kicks us off on YouTube saying, uh, just searching for a how-to on exactly this subject. Great timing. Thank you. Awesome. Andy on YouTube says, uh, that's a nice video to see. Can't wait. Fantastic. Glad to hear it. Betancourt is here. Mondanir, hello, hello. Leak Geek, how you doing? Dukasoft is over there on Twitch. Alex Calder, hello world to you. Uh, Prathamish, how you doing there? Charles Galuli is here on Twitch as well. Ken Yup is dialed in from China. G very good evening to you, later evening there. How you doing there? Mark on YouTube. Um, hello to, I'm sorry, I can't read your name on YouTube, dialed in from Korea. Crafty Becky is here on Twitch. How you doing there, Becky? Welcome in. Thanks for tuning in with us. Mohammed, hello world to you. Chris Jones on Twitch. And, uh, uh, Andy in Al is here from Albania. I7 Andy on Twitch with a big yo. Hein Heinrich, how you doing on YouTube? Robert Dean Yo says, howdy people. Aryan, hello to you in Nepal. Darth Blazer, yes. <laughs> I had a, a voice mod running the other day where I sounded on, on Twitch, where I sounded a little bit like, like the Sith Lord himself, Darth Vader, except I was coding Blazer. Hence, I am Darth Blazer. Let's say that right. I am Darth Blazer. Nah, 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 I don't know. We'll figure it out. Though. Um... Utsav, Amir34A, hello, hello. Ahmed, hello to you in London. The Nora in Germany, how you doing there? Mohammed in Iran. Shy Sharp, good morning to you on Twitch. Kay is here and says, Happy New Year and best wishes from YouTube. Looking forward to all the new tech coming out soon. Definitely. Saduki, oh my goodness. So good to see you over there on Twitch. Palumi is here repping Nija. Okay. How you doing there, Benny V83? You love today's topic? I, I hope we have a good time with that. Dev Jutsu on Twitch has a question. Migrated a Blazor app from Net5 to Net6. Fantastic. Everything worked fine except .NET Watch. Didn't pick up your user secrets. That's interesting. We're going to talk about user secrets today. Um, it should pick that up right away. Um, check the latest version. There's a new version of the SDK that, that is coming out. There's a preview 
60200 that's that's getting ready to come out i'm wondering if there's something in there that isn't loading properly endercon hello to you in turkey dev jutsu drop me a line on twitter same nick c sharp fritz over there on twitter and let's talk about that let's see if we can figure out what's going on with that get you some help how you doing there dot net kyle sykes benedict in uganda how's it going there Nit, uh netin exactly what you were looking for fantastic pavlo is here from ukraine carl edwards is from south africa sakib yakub hello to you nerd herder is here on twitch roddy digital you prefer that c sharp fritz guy but you'll turn in tune in and see if this visual studio guy is any good well thank you wellington is dialed in from brazil uh is that biopica from ukraine good to see you anything particular you have to do to, for components to use as styling as computer component name razor cs does that work in dotnet 5 no that's a dotnet 6 and forward feature that isolated css um enrique uh hello to you in argentina happy 2022 so good to see you uh world world of steve greetings to you in switzerland anderson's here from brazil alexander from georgia uh how you doing there lolo 4711 blitz and kill is here from arkansas glenn miller from aliquippa pa my state my neck of the woods here i'm in philadelphia eh, just outside how you doing there tg jazz weather how's it going hello hello it's been a it's been a few weeks since we we've been together i hope you've had a fantastic new year um you you got all the you got all the holiday gifts you were looking for you, new year's happened and you're looking forward to to new beginnings here um i hope everybody is healthy we had a couple of encounters in the fritz household with um with the the covid um i've i've got a handful of tests sitting in boxes just in case we've been through a few of them they've all turned out negative um so we're we're holding in tight here all good and healthy no issues with with covid so far um in the fritz household how you doing jazz weather is here from new jersey nathan from indiana hello hello just lolo all right just lolo so good to see you just lolo thank you so much for tuning in just lolo i'll make sure to continue to refer to you as just lolo this is going to be fun i i do pick on when folks it, folks correct me with their name with something like that and and uh raven is here from india how's it going there is it raven or ravine probably ravine morton christensen from denmark hello hello james foreman uh asks why would i use blazer WebAssembly versus blazer server good question we're not covering blazer just yet we'll get into blazer soon but i'll i'm happy to answer that that question about the two different frameworks blazer WebAssembly compiles runs entirely in your browser that means it's really good in those disconnected scenarios where you don't need to be attached to and running on a server. It, conversely, just as its name implies, Blazor Server means that you always have to be connected to the server because all the code that's executing is executing on the server. So in situations where you're using a, where, where you need a tightly connected service, where you're always going back to the server, you're keeping, <clears throat> excuse me, all of your intellectual property, all of your code on the server for regulatory reasons, what have you. It, Blazor server works very nicely. However, if you're serving an application that might be run by folks that are somewhere out there in the world where they're on a mobile device and they might not necessarily have the best internet connection, Blazor WebAssembly works great because you can deal with those occasionally connected scenarios because your application runs entirely in the browser you might have to run back to the server to interact with data and, and connect to other systems but your entire application can run in the browser without having to without requiring additional services to get things started <clears throat> madiner asks uh i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly uh can wasm call files directly without javascript so web WASM WebAssembly, can it call files directly? What do you mean by call files directly? Can we interact with files in on in the um, um, on the file system? No, you're in the same sandbox. You're in the same constraints as uh, as JavaScript application. 
you would have to reach out and fetch data from somewhere else. Can it use, can it call and bring in that data directly without JavaScript? Sure, but you still need JavaScript in order to bootstrap and hand things off to WebAssembly. So you're going to need some JavaScript in, in, in the flow in order to get things started just because that's that's the way the browsers work right now. You need to be able to start up, bootstrap that WebAssembly framework, hand things off, and then you're off and running over there. Let me get some music playing here in the background, and I'll get into some more of the questions. This is Stream Beats by Harris Heller. And this is his lo-fi playlist. This is music that is DMCA-free, royalty-free. You can listen to it wherever you'd like, whether it's Twitch, YouTube, like we are here, Facebook, doesn't matter. The, you can find instrumental songs, songs that are groovy, it'll just help you get into the flow. All kinds of genres are available out there at streambeats.com, including playlists for Apple Music, Amazon Music, and Spotify, like I'm listening to today. You can even download the songs if you want them. Thank you so much to Harris Heller for making this music available for us to listen to today. There you go. I did my uh, credit. I credited the music, so everything's going well with that. All right. Dialing in here a little bit more. Uh, Nathan is starting a new job today as a back-end developer. Good luck to you out there, Nathan. We got to applaud that. We got to celebrate a little bit of that, right? That's, that's awesome stuff. <laughs> Folks getting new jobs, finding new successes in their careers. Absolutely. Listen, the whole, the whole chat room is applauding you, Nathan. All the best for, to you and your new job. Uh, hello, Jeff. Uh, greetings to to uh, Kuda, uh, Kudakawashi in Zimbabwe. Um, let me see here. To, 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 to. Rambling Geek. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Good to see you over there on Twitch. Moise, how you doing there in Bethesda? Um, do, 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 do. Um, Sir RV Gruwal in India. How's, how's it going there? Caparino. <clears throat> with a with a question here, getting us started from Twitch. Since Azure Web Jobs are not Azure Functions. Okay. What's the Web Jobs SDK used for by Azure Functions for queue and storage? Well, the Web Jobs SDK has the the various interactions to be able to reach into Azure Storage like that to do that connection. So that's a little bit about what's happening there. Um, you're going to have to check James Montemagno's recorded video on that. Sorry, I uh, can't help you with that one. Um, how's it going there? Mr. Cubix on Twitch. Good to see you. Um, and oh, good. Bald Bearded Builder has a link there for Blazor Server versus Blazor WebAssembly. Um, Web jobs isn't something that runs in the background in app service model. Yes, it is. That's exactly what it is. It you install it and it runs outside of the web application on the same server. So it's it's with how they share the interactions with Azure Storage is what's yeah what's happening there uh, because Azure Functions grew out of web jobs. Um, timers also are, are tied in there as well. How you doing there? Alpha Tech in Sri Lanka. Uh, let me see here. Shivam is here from India. Good to see you. Um, bah, 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 bah. Yeah, which one to choose? Uh, how you doing? Ken Yup on YouTube with the Cat Jam emotes. Uh, hoo, 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 hoo. Do, 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 do. Uh, there is web jobs are part of app service, but they're hosted on the same box and managed in the same app service instance. Um, can we have mixed components, web assembly, web assembly components and server components in the same website? Yes. Why? Are you, are you trying to establish a pseudo connected hybrid connected application? If you are, you can pre render content, host your web assembly content in a ASP in an ASP.NET Core application and you can pre-render the content so that it gets rendered on the server and when it uh, is delivered on the client the WebAssembly code picks up and runs with it so 
Uh, how you doing there? Is it Ijali Hausum? Hello to you on YouTube. Um, on from Tunisia. Hello, Bruce Lane is here from Twitch. Good to see you. Um, can you deploy Maui as a web application? No. Uh, .NET Maui is for building native applications that run on Windows, iOS, Android, and Mac OS. So you can't deploy a .NET Maui application as a web application. Two different things. Um, so you can put your Blazor web application into a .NET Maui application and host it very similar to how you see Electron apps hosted and be able to run and interact with those. So slightly different. It's really only a one-way thing and .NET Maui is our native application platform. Um, how you doing there? MDS Ubuntu on Twitch. James Foreman on YouTube asks, do I play games? I do. Um, I've been playing a lot of Magic the Gathering Arena recently. You'll find, you'll see me floating around out there. Same, same handle that I have, uh, here on YouTube, on Twitch, C Sharp Fritz. Uh, I'm, I'm on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, and on Magic the Gathering Arena, and GitHub for that matter. Same nickname everywhere. I've been playing a lot of that. Um, I play a bit of Killing Floor 2. Uh, I've gotten back into uh, Cyberpunk 2077. That's been interesting as more and more of the, um, of the, of the game is, and storyline is revealed to me. Um, I'm finding that very interesting. Um, yeah, it, it's been fun. So, R. Blake, hello to you in Germany. Christian um, asks, are we going to use Azure services for the chatbot? I plan to do that next week. We'll get into deployment, some of the considerations, what that means. I plan to do that next week. We'll talk a little bit about source control, GitHub Actions, and deploying and running things on Azure. That's planned for next time. We're, we're just going to build it this time, and we'll do that hosting deployment work next time. Madiner uh, asks, how can I call SQL from uh, SQL trigger in C Sharp? Well, you don't call triggers. You call some code, it, you execute some code on a database, you insert data, or you execute a stored procedure that interacts with a table that then triggers a, a SQL trigger to do some interaction with that data. Um, so we're planning to rebuild our application to .NET MAUI, uh, asks Ahmad, uh, I'm sorry, Ahmed on YouTube, can we host it on Azure? No, .NET MAUI is a native hosted application. I mean, you could deploy it into a virtual machine on Azure, sure, but .NET MAUI are native applications meant to be installed from a store, like the iOS store or the Android store, and deployed to your, your phone, your Windows desktop, your Mac OS desktop. Yes, Bruce Lane, we're going to be building a Discord bot today. Um, da, 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 da. Thank you, Saduki, chiming in there with a the comment about um, comparing Azure offerings. Um, Blitz and Kill, sucked into Psychonauts 2 right now. I... I, I, I try to stay with smaller games that uh, because I, I get I get distracted quickly. There's all kinds of things constantly going on, whether it's family things, work things, stream commitments. Um, I try not to allocate more than 15 minutes to 30 minutes f to play a game at a time. So I, I get into every morning. I, I do Sudoku puzzles to get my mind ramped up get it started right um and and um i i regularly solve rubik's cubes did once again puzzle solving get my mind moving um but spending more than a half an hour playing a game is just not possible in my current lifestyle it just isn't it, coding for more than a half an hour is just not possible in my current lifestyle unless i'm streaming that's the only way that I'm able to block out and, and get that type of attention to work on things. So, um, you're a big Halo fan, James Foreman. That's cool. TG asks, is the chatbot going to use AI behind? I wasn't planning on adding AI features. There's ways to do that. There are all kinds of chatbot builders out there. My intention here is to build something very simple. Literally a ping, a ping pong, a hello world type of bot to show the interaction with Discord. 
but all those pieces with here's how you hook up to the service here's how you store configuration values here's how you manage events here's how you do those things work with NuGet packages um, and, and define secrets and manage those in your application that's going to be the focus of where we're going today we're going to start with about 10 lines of code not even and it's going to expand because we're going to bring in some other services that are going to make things a little bit more interesting and at that point that's when we get to hand it off to you out there you kind folks in chat you viewers out there watching the recording so that you can take your level of innovation take your creativity explore the features of that chat platform and build add in those capabilities that make sense for whatever your project might be i'm not going to invent and show you how to build a chatbot that automatically detects the hat that i'm wearing on stream okay i did do that about three years ago over on my twitch stream but how you want to interact with folks in chat is going to be up to you um if someone updated a record right after i retrieve a record s real on youtube will the ef core refresh the record f transaction no mm -mm. it will not um, Entity Framework gives you this, the, the data in the database at the time that you request it. At, if it changes after you put it into memory, you're going to run into a concurrency issue if you make a change and try and save it back and there's a new version of the data in the database. Um, your team plays chess for two minutes. Ahmed, I, when I used to work in person for, for various companies, um the, the last company i worked for we played two minute blitz chess over lunch and it was amazing we're getting way far into the dotnet maui questions i'm not going going to go too far into those because it's it's very off topic uh .NET maui is not taking over for wpf and winforms in the future it's wpf and winforms have been around for a very long time there's going to continue to be support for those and there's going to continue to be innovation on those .NET MAUI is going to give you that cross-platform application that you're going to want to be able to build and deploy to wherever you want to go. Uh, how you doing there, Amit? Uh, asking, is it a good idea to use .NET MAUI for existing Xamarin app? If you have an existing Xamarin app, no. Um, I would not look at moving to .NET MAUI yet because you already have an app that's running in a framework that's fully supported. I would wait until <clears throat> .NET MAUI is released before converting. Um, so it, it will add complexity. It, it may solve some code and architectural problems, but let's, let's wait until May, June, when April, May, June, when .NET MAUI is released. We'll, we'll have more about that as we get closer and the team is confident in a release date. Um, greetings to you, Nikolai in, uh, Ukraine. Good to see you. Uh, no, I'm not going to be using D.NET, no. Uh, Nightbot, blah, 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 blah. Uh, let me see here. Um, hey, how's it going? Tomato on YouTube. Um, Miguel, good to see you on YouTube. I don't seem a developer. Okay. Maybe I'm not. I, I guess I'm not a developer. Uh, get back to me on that. Um, you have a data grid that loads data using Blazor server, but once the data is loaded, that sort group is done in WebAssembly. Jazzweather, yeah. Pre-render that content. Pre-render that content, you'll be in great shape. Um, how you doing there, Risha, on YouTube? Alexander, can we use this chatbot in Messenger? I'm specifically targeting Discord today. Um, the, the techniques that I'm going to show you, you can certainly swap out and, and drop in um, libraries from Messenger, but I'm focusing on Discord today. You will learn C Sharp. Take a look at the videos in this series uh, right here on YouTube. Um, look for, on the .NET channel, look for C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz and just walk back. You'll see there's dozens of videos. There's lots and lots of videos that you'll be able to watch where I talk through very slowly here i've got github links to um all kinds of samples and source code that you can run locally as well as documentation 
to help teach you more about C-sharp. You can also go to dot.net and click the Learn tab there, and there's all kinds of information from many different sources on the official Microsoft site. Um, yeah, Nathan is right. .NET MAUI isn't going to replace WinForms WPF. There are literally tens of millions of applications built with those. They're not going anywhere. Um, how you doing there, Ionescu? Uh, Guillermo, hello to you in Spain. Um, why building MAUI for Mac need Mac? Because you, you, you're compiling for that operating system. Apple requires you to have a Mac to build for Mac. Their rules, not mine. Um, do, 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 let me see here. How you doing, Christian? You have to go. Uh, hope you won't get more of these board questions. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, the unknown on YouTube says, I really do like .NET 6 and the newer features of C Sharp. How do I feel about either of them? Either of them? There's, there's more than two. Uh, there, there's some really good features to .NET 6 and, and C Sharp. We're going to take advantage of some of them today to really create a tight, very small application to get things started to build our, our Discord bot. What, what I like about that is my initial bootstrapping code, my code that starts my application, can be very focused on just those things to get the application started. And then I can hand off to my application specific code and I don't have to think about that other bootstrapping code over there. Literally, I set it and I forget it. I don't need to go back to it again. Hello to you, Ayman in Syria. Uh, Roddy is getting some coffee. All right, fantastic. Roddy, let me know when you get back. Oh, let's keep talking. Um, hello to you in Taiwan. Is it is it Yanin? Is that how you pronounce that? Andy Walter on YouTube asks, do I think I can cover source generators since they can improve performance of apps by eliminating reflection? Not going to get into that today. Definitely something that we should cover, particularly the new source generators around Entity Framework and um, JSON serialization. <coughs> I'm, I'm getting dry throat here. <clears throat> um, definitely something we should take a look at, but I don't have it on the agenda for today. Um, you can only see a few advantages of native apps with .NET MAUI while web apps become more powerful. Um, there's all kinds of things that you get with native apps that web applications can't do even though, it, and there's also cultural things there as well. Even though you have web applications out there that folks can create as a progressive web app and install on their mobile device, desktop, whether it's Windows, Mac OS, Linux, um, nobody does that. Literally nobody does that. It's possible, but nobody searches for them, installs them, and uses them. They go to the App Store, whether it's the, the iOS store, the Google Play store, the Windows store, and they download and install things that have been verified by somebody else out there. They don't just go to whatever website and click the install PWA button, or they look for the big install from the iPhone store, the iOS store, click that button. They, I agree with you. As a web developer, I love the power that I have in the web browser. Not disagreeing with you at all. You are spot on with that. I agree. However, culturally, folks still aren't in the mindset of web applications are powerful. They want that native app running on their favorite device. Um, Samander, hello to you. Transylvania Jeff is going for their third vaccine in a few hours. All the best to you, Jeff. Uh, I, I got my booster at the beginning of December, so I've got three vaccines on board. Um, my older daughter went just after Christmas, 27th, and my younger daughter just went on Friday and got hers. So we are, my family is all boosted up. What's the best way to create a report? Look at a reporting tool, uh, like active reports, um, or spread from our friends at Component One Grape City. Um, is this an intermediate level video? 
I wouldn't say this is an intermediate le level video. Is that uh, Jermaine in uh, Colombia? It's not intermediate, but it's definitely e expecting some C sharp knowledge. Um, any video on clean architecture in C sharp? Um, take a look back in in this playlist here. C sharp with C sharp for its playlist. And I did a solid, I think I've done two videos on solid in this, uh, in, in this playlist. I don't think I specifically went into clean architecture though. Um, so I, I went into solid design patterns and we're going to show you a couple design patterns here today, uh, around configuration, um, handy things off for event management extensions and, and you'll be able to see those. Um, Interplanet Me, hello to you in the Northeast. Welcome. Um, uh, Iman said, .NET and C Sharp is the most beautiful, well-designed and engineered stack. Unfortunately, it's not widely used in your area. What can we do to change that? What can we do to change that? There's, there's so much that, that folks get out of C Sharp and .NET that you just don't have in other frameworks. There were JavaScript maintainers that literally sabotaged their their libraries yesterday over the weekend, and and broke brought down a, a lot of applications out there. It is so much so that that folks really turned on this maintainer. Is is that something that you feel comfortable betting your company on? The the will and aim of of a open source maintainer and if they if they get angry if they're if, if something happens and, and they get upset and they go and and put something mean something that breaks purposely breaks their libraries and this isn't the first time this has happened to javascript we take a look at and you can look up the left pad uh scenario that happened a few years ago the the, the javascript community now has on multiple occasions, sabotaged everybody who uses Node. Is that really what you want to bet your enterprise on? Is when folks can do that to your code? We need a little bit more professionalism around some of the frameworks and tools that we use. And that's that's not something that I want to bet my company on. So csharp.net definitely has a little bit more professionalism in that community. That you can rely on. When are we starting? In about nine minutes, we'll be through the AMA. Um, let me see here. Something like a da, 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 Saduki having a conversation there on Twitch. Um, a course, mini course on clean architecture and CQRS. Yeah, a, a mini course that's eight hours. That's not a mini course. That's a long. I mean, the amount of writing that goes involved goes into that. CQRS is not a simple thing to explain. I've, I've given half-hour, hour-long lectures on it. It is not easy to explain. So, you don't think that has anything to do with JavaScript? No, it doesn't, but it has to do with that's the tech community that relies on those tools and libraries. So, while it doesn't have anything to do with the JavaScript technology, it has to do with the JavaScript community. Two different things. Both named JavaScript. Where have I seen that before? Um, do, 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 do. Emmanuel, good to see you in Germany. Hello. Hello to Ali in Syria. Uh, it wasn't yesterday. It was It was within the last week. There were Faker.js and Color.js were sabotaged. Um, the .NET community is a little bit more professional in how things are built and released. Yes. Um, you do need an account on Discord for us. We're going to go go through that, show you how that, where to set that up, and, and how to be, get your developer tools configured for that, which is all in the browser. It's really good stuff. Can I show how to delete a specific file in Windows with a C Sharp console app? Take a look at just running, at, at looking, uh, take a look at the delete method on the file object. System.io.file. Um, system IO file delete. It's a static method on it. You're going to be able to execute directly. 
um, and just point it to whatever file it is you want to remove. Love the hat. Thank you so much. Got the. I, I typically wear my my Microsoft hats on stream. I haven't worn the Azure hat in a while because they changed the logo, so I need a new Azure hat. But the GitHub hat, C Sharp hat, Blazor hat. We'll get into the Blazor hat later. Um, when when we get into Blazor. So and I've got a couple of Microsoft hats as well. I need some more, really. Um, I, well, of course, we're a little bit partisan to the .NET community. We're on the .NET channel. We're on the Visual Studio channel. There's nothing wrong with the JavaScript technology. We've seen now in in over the course of several years, there are folks in the JavaScript tech community that are more than willing to sabotage their community. That's a fact. Is that something that you want to rely on? Is that something that they can do to prevent? Um, let me see here. Is a Discord chatbot stable enough to use as a comms tool in a small development environment? Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I, I manage a, a few communities across Discord. There's even a C-sharp community on Discord, um, a .NET community as well that you can join into. Um, uh, Modinier uh, doesn't like JavaScript. Is Blazor WebAssembly enough? It'll get you pretty close. It'll get you pretty close. Um, <laughs> mini course number one, clean architecture and CQRS. You don't, that's, writing an eight hour course, writing a course, writing material, like the material I'm showing you today, takes between three to five times as long to write the material as it does to present it. Then you dial in production time, configuration, editing, and it takes about three times as long as the content that you actually present to edit and produce. So you, the, the mini course you're requesting is going to take me the better part of 50 to 60 hours to assemble and deliver and produce. Not saying that I shouldn't do it, but that's a lot of work. That's not mini by any stretch. Happy New Year to you in Ecuador. Uh, Annette Saralando. Hello. Hey, Paul. Paul Shell on YouTube asks, would I recommend Azure Container Apps to host a Discord bot? No. And I'll tell you why. Azure Container Apps are built to be, um, to be managed on consumption. So they're intended to start up, handle a few requests, and then go back to sleep. That's not how the Discord bot that we're going to build works it's awake and it's listening and waiting for messages to be delivered to it that interaction means you need a persistent connection you need it to be able to restart when things break when things go wrong it needs to be able to handle those errors but you want a consistent connection to the discord service more on that and as we take a look at how we structure this in just a little bit um, you've been coding Discord bots for a year or so now. You want to see if there's anything to, anything you're missing? Uh, the gyroverse. I'm not going to get deep into some of the nitty gritty around Discord. I'm really going to be, I'm using Discord as a vehicle to, in, to introduce several concepts around building an application that we just haven't touched yet. Um... Mm -hmm. enjoy watching brian clark do coding streams oh yeah brian clark's a good friend absolutely he's done some good stuff there um brother philip asks where did i learn programming logic the way you think logically when it comes to creating what you want um i went to the pennsylvania state university here on in in pennsylvania um and I, I graduated with a, a degree in management sciences and information systems. So I, I studied it at school. But the key thing is I've continued teaching myself, learning, reading, and, and learning about new techniques and uh, new technologies. And that's, that's how I do the, the interaction and, and know 
what to teach and share with you. Rambling Geek says, go make a YouTube video and see how many minutes you get after preparing, recording, and editing. Exactly. It's And, and the worst part about that is um, you then have folks that, that complain on YouTube um, thinking you didn't put in much work. Uh, my gosh. When you've spent a lot of time recording and producing something, it's when negative comments come in on your videos and they complain about about the quality of something that you created it 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 hurts the folks that that are putting the effort in to create those things try to be encouraging help them to point to them and say hey you know what you can improve this and here's here's what you know i i didn't find this terribly useful can you improve that you know that kind of thing am i going to be using signal r asks bags mcgee on twitch no we will not be using signal r there's um, th there's a library we're going to be using that's going to do the communication back and forth to Discord. Um, yes, we are planning to get into F Sharp. Um, now that I'm in the new year, we'll we'll be talking to, uh, particularly Kathleen Dollard wants to join us on stream and talk about F Sharp. So we'll see that. What kind of coffee am I drinking? I have a Starbucks vanilla brew. Thanks so much for asking. It's not I like I didn't run the Starbucks. I have Starbucks K cups. K cups. How you doing there, Phil? Phil found the channel through Layla. Loving the content. Useful for you as a newish developer. Thank you. Appreciate the comments. Yes. Dukasoft with the big mmm coffee. Um, coffee coffee is developer fuel. <laughs> coffee, tea, whatever it might be. For me, it's coffee, and it is my developer fuel. Um, maybe it's a thing of evolution. As a C-sharp developer, web developing had to be added to existing skills. While JavaScript developers mainly do web stuff. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. JavaScript developers are trying to get JavaScript into more places. Which effectively means hosting some sort of a framed web browser in other places. And doing things with it. Um, it's, it's a fine application strategy. Um, but I, I, I've got several personal concerns with the JavaScript community and technologies that I'm not um, I'm, I'm not too thrilled with. I'd like to see things improve over there. The, the, the bloat around packages and, and growth in the JavaScript community is uh, it's intimidating and it means that you run into a lot of unmanaged projects out there. Let's let's cod. That should say let's code. What what did you cut off my my uh, my e there? What the what is that? Come on now. Is it, gotta, is it over there? Is is it? No, it's not there. You make me sad. Fine. Um, moving on. I'm gonna just answer the last few things that we have here, and we'll get over to the code. Uh, what about a WhatsApp bot? Nope, sorry, Discord is where we're going today because it's easy for anybody to get into. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. What do I say about the most efficient way to increase your knowledge about .NET to someone who already knows so uh, C Sharp at a... I'm not what a Goog level is. I don't know what that means. Um, it, stop asking about WhatsApp bot. I, I answered your question. I'm not doing that today, sorry. Um... Watch videos like the ones that I produce to get you get you going. Take a look at some of the tutorials out on dot dot net under the learn panel there, and you'll find some cool stuff to get you going. Uh, uh all right, yeah, I'm just playing Call of Duty. That's what, yeah, that's it. Um, uh, do I know Python? I know enough Python to be dangerous. Um. I don't. I don't prefer Python. Python. Um, I can do a lot more in a lot more places faster with .NET. Practice, practice, practice. Absolutely. Get out there, build little applications, write little utility methods to do things, just like we're going to do in a little bit here. We're going to be talking about, we're and we're going to get into now, um, setting up a Discord account for development, and and building and interacting with 
with with a an application configuration um, packages out there that you can use to to build and deliver cool new features with C sharp. So you built with Discord Net, yeah. We're gonna I'm I'm actually gonna use um, what's the other one? Not Discord Net. Well, we're gonna see it in just a little bit. I have it's in my notes over on the other machine. So let's do this. Let's get turned over. Turned over to the other microphone. There we go. Um, grab the coffee. Grab the phone. Let's see what else? What am I missing? <gasps> Don't forget that. Do I need the remote? Don't need the remote. Um, the teleprompter is loaded up. And we're just about ready to go here. Uh, don't trip over my cable here. How are we doing? One second. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Um, why do I actually switch mics? Because I can't take this one on over with me to the other set. So, um, all right. And I do have a wireless headset, but it the quality of the sound isn't as good as this microphone. Um, sorry, we're already done the AMA segment. I'm not going to go in and answer some of those off-topic questions. We're going to get into building a Discord bot right now. All right. Doing the walk to the other set. Making sure that I'm... Hi, friends. Now I'm over here now. Hello. And... Yep, that machine went to sleep. One second. One second. There we go, and where's my browser? There's that, there it is. And there we go. There we go. Seriously? Seriously. You're gonna... Wow. All right. I see what's going on here. Um, I want this on too. Cool. Um, do, 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 do. Yes, I have a teleprompter.net, Kyle, that I load your chat into so I can read chat by looking right at the camera. So that's kind of cool. Now, I, I, yeah, all right. Um, bu -bu -bu. how you doing there, Saint? Good to see you. Um, all right. So let's talk about building for Discord. Let's talk about what Discord is and how we can get in and, and start interacting with this. Now, I, I, once again, I chose Discord because it's a, it, it's a no cost, low impact tool that you can use for communication, just like other chat services, whether it's something like Slack or Teams. Discord is out there that's free for anybody to sign up. You can stand up a bot real easy, and there's tools, there's libraries out there that are available for all kinds of uh, libraries, programming languages that you may want to work with. Um, you can deploy in all kinds of different places, but for today, we're going to talk about just what it takes to get a bot running, and then we're going to look at some of the ways we can optimize a little bit of that structure, some of the ways that we can take advantage of some of the architecture considerations that come with .NET 6, that come with C Sharp 10, so that you can reduce significantly the amount of code that you need to write in order to, to build your application. So let's talk about it. Here it is. This is session 1114. So this is, uh, this is technically part of the first season, but it's, it's the second iteration of it. So I updated it. So it's Season 1, 1. 14th episode. Uh, something like that. This might actually be the 15th, and I need to change that to 15, I think. Yeah, let's change that to 15 real quick. One second. Da, 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 da. Change that to 15. And update that. So this is in its own branch right now. And as we go through, and, and I've got some more code and things that I need to, need to write into the text that goes with this. But... Um, I'll take care of that a little bit later today. This will be updated and have all the content for you. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this on Twitch, it, on YouTube, take a look just below the chat, uh, just below the video. There is, it, even whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording, there's a link 
to the GitHub repository, github.com slash C sharp Fritz slash C sharp underscore with underscore C sharp Fritz. If you're on Twitch, you can execute the GitHub command to get that link so you can jump right in and see this. I'm in a branch specifically called 1115 right now if you're watching the live stream. If you're watching this on a recording, you'll find this in the main branch with everything else. And I'm in season one, 1115, okay? So along the way here, we're gonna learn how to use NuGet packages. We're gonna learn a little bit about building and working with configuration for our .NET applications. Not always are you going to have the same ways that you want your application to behave. So it's nice to be able to pass in configuration options from from a, a settings file on disk or maybe from environment variables or maybe you've got some some secrets some things like application keys that you want to put somewhere else so you don't don't inadvertently check them into github so chat room i gotta ask no i'm gonna save that question we'll get to that we'll get to that later extension methods are another thing here that i, I want to introduce today because extension methods allow you to to weld on features to your current classes and allow them to do different things. Okay. Um, why build a chatbot? Why not build a whole nother Discord with .NET 6? Because building a whole Discord service, while possible with things like SignalR, maybe we can talk about that when we get to SignalR in our ASP.NET unit. But... Um, let's connect up to an existing service out there and build on our C-sharp skills that we've learned and, and we know how to work with. So this is all about getting folks introduced and, and up and running. Okay. How you doing there, Anarbeck? Good to see you. Hello. So first thing we need to do in order to build and work with Discord is, well, you need to sign up. You need to get an account on Discord. So discordapp.com. You can download the tool, the, the application, run it on Windows, run it on Linux, run it on Mac OS. Click that big button there. It'll be flavored appropriately for whatever operating system you're using. Or you can even open it right here in your browser. And it will log you in and you'll start to see some of the information about various servers that you're interacting with. And yeah, thank you. I, I get it and be able to work with these things, okay? Now, I, I created Fritz Dev Server over here so that I had a little server I could work in that's just me without folks popping in and writing all kinds of things on the screen here. So, um, and there's my tests that I ran this morning just to make sure everything was still working. All right, so I'm in, I have an account. I signed up on discordapp.com. Let me go back there again. And, uh, right, you can download, and when it, after it um, downloads, it'll give you the opportunity to create an account and start logging in and working with it. All right, so once you have that, once you have an account and you're logged in, um, we're going to head to the developer portal over here at this link, discordapp.com, developers, applications. And I'm going to zoom out slightly. You get this screen that says applications, and it's got your avatar right there so you know you're logged in and you can see applications the teams of folks that you collaborate with server insights into the various discord servers that you interact with right in in discord you can you can create a server right which is a collection of various channels where you and your friends your colleagues can chat and share share funny pictures and talk about whatever it might be you can create as many servers as you'd like and uh, you can see some insights about them there. We're not gonna be creating a server. I already have a server today. We're gonna be creating, yeah, that's right. We're gonna be doing a little bit of this. Um, well, I actually have that so you can log in with Discord on the feedback site. But today we're gonna create a brand new application. We're gonna build up a bot that we can, we can work with here. So in order to have a bot that connects and works on Discord, we need to create an application on Discord that our code that we're gonna write 
knows how to connect to. Okay, let me say that again. In order for us to have code that we write connect to and interact with the Discord service, we need to allocate an application on Discord. We need to tell them, hey, I'm writing code that I want to execute and interact with you. And then they'll give us some tokens and some authentication capabilities that we can use to connect in and work with their service. So let's do that. I'm going to click the new application button right here behind my noggin. There it is. And I'm going to give my bot a name here. So I'm going to call this the Super Duper Fritz Bot. Bot. There it is right there. And I'll click Create. And now I have my Super Duper Fritz Bot right here. Okay. Now I can assign an image. I can assign an icon to go with it. So let me grab... Uh, let me see here. I think I have my emotes over here. I do. I do. I do. I do. And I think I've got my little bot. Let me see. Do I have it up in here? Yes. Let's grab, let's grab this one and I'll use that. There we go. So I've got a little bot image now for, for my icon to go with my super duper Fritz bot. And you can configure whatever you'd like for your image. Uh, put a little bit of a description on here. Um, a simple, a chat bot, a super duper chat bot, uh, created by Fritz live on his, uh, C sharp with C sharp Fritz stream. Okay. And I'm already being prompted here. Oh, you have unsaved changes. We'll get to that. Um, I have an application ID. I have a public key. So I can do some authentication interaction there. Um, some interaction endpoint URLs and ter terms of service. So I can tell folks when you interact with this bot, there's some terms of service you need to know. And of course, a privacy policy. If you're going to store and remember any information about folks, I'm not as part of this. So it's okay. We're, we're going to go and, and work with this uh, very simply here today. So I've created my bot. I've got a little bit of information configured there. Next thing that I, I need to do um, is we need to add the bot user. Now I didn't put screenshots of this in here because it's kind of a one way thing. So I'm going to click into bot and because I want to build a chat bot and I have these things here. Hey, bring your bot to your app to life as a bot user. Be part of chat in your user servers and interact with them directly, right? This is a chat bot. Folks are going to interact with it or things are going to happen in the chat room and our, we want our bot to wake up and, and say something to interact. So to do that, we're going to build a bot here. We need to click this add bot button right here. So I'll click that and it says, hey, I'm going to add a bot, a bot user to this application. You cannot back out of this. Do choose wisely. Yes, let's create that app. And it says here, a wild bot has appeared. Well, we haven't tamed it yet. We're getting there. So, let me see here. Take a look back at chat. What, we're not going to get too far into functionality today, Sandeep. We're going to get into really more focused around um, some of the, the project features that we can use. And, and the bot is really a vehicle for how we're going to deliver those. We, we can add some other features in another stream, perhaps when we're talking about machine learning or um, some other interactions that we want to build on with this bot and add features to make them available. But for now, I'm using this just to talk about some other things that, that are going to be interesting to learn about C Sharp. It is free. There's a question here in chat from TG. Is Discord developer account, is that free for folks to sign up and use? Yes, it is. Thank you, John, on YouTube, chiming in with an answer. It is free to sign up, get started. You don't have to send any payment to anybody. It's completely free to deploy as well. And well, it's completely free to have your bot run with Discord. Where you have it run and how much you spend when you deploy it to wherever, that's up to you. All right. Yeah, we haven't tamed it yet. <laughs> All right, so I have my bot user here. Next thing I need to do is I need to get a 
a token for this user. So I'm going to go into OAuth2. This is a authorization system that we're going to use to authorize our bot to join a server. So I clicked into URL generator down here. And this is, uh, where is it? This is a bot. We need to turn on bot right there. Let me, there we go. That's a little bit easier to see. And down here, well, what are the permissions that your bot needs? Now, if you're like me, back in the day when you installed Visual Studio or you installed Windows, you didn't know when you might need different features or whatever. So it was just easiest to say, give me everything. When it comes to permissions like this, it's best to start as minimal as possible. Don't add things that you don't need right now. Later, you can add features and request more permissions at that time. But for now, don't don't go and say, well, give me everything. Click, 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 click. Go click all these things. Don't do that. Only turn on those things you need. And for this bot, all I, that I want to do is I'm going to go and turn on um, the ability to read messages. And I'm going to turn on the ability uh, to send messages here and read message history. And it generates a URL here that I can use to log in and interact with that. I see we've got somebody being unfriendly on YouTube and I need to moderate... And they're gone. All right. All right. So I have my my um, account here that I can use to sign in and prompt me. Hey, you're currently signed in as this. Let's connect it to somewhere on Discord. I'm going to put it on my Fritz Dev server. And it's asking, hey, this bot wants to be able to do these things. Um, it's only been around since the 10th of January. It's not used on any other servers. Uh, are you sure you want to do this? Yes, I, I am. And I am human. And it's authorized. Now, that bot, that bot configuration is authorized. Next... I need to go and actually write some code that knows how to connect to Discord and use that application's credentials to actually serve as that bot on the Discord service. Yes, YouTube with spam bots, do tell. So, uh, yeah, am I really a human? No, I am a meat popsicle. Um... Man, the movie references. I am constantly with the movie references, you know? So, all right. So there's my bot. It's on Discord. We're going to need to come back into here in just a little bit. But let's go start creating our super duper chat bot. Um, I don't know. We'll start another tab here. Come on. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go into my dev branch. There I am. So let's create a new console application. .NET new console. And we're going to create just a simple uh, application. I will call this um, super duper bot. Okay. And it allocates and creates that very simple console application for me here. So let's go into that folder. Thank you. And I'm going to use Visual Studio Code today because it's nice and simple. I can get in here and work without um, putting too much pressure on this laptop. All right. So this starts off, of course, like, yeah, thank you. Like all .NET console applications with just a simple console right line, hello world. And we're gonna get into a lot more than that. Ah, somebody got my movie reference. Can a Discord bot get a user's IP address? No, it cannot. Hello there. Nope. Um, already talked about what Discord is. Sorry, Shara Fudin. You can rewind and go back to that. Um, it's typically used by gamers. A lot more folks in other spaces are using it. 
How can we integrate a chatbot in a Blazor app? Way off topic for right now, but I would look at something like SignalR to do that. Um, yep, voice and video chat with multiple people is supported. What's my distro of choice? Windows 11. Um, other than that, Ubuntu on Linux. Okay, so we're going to get in here, and I'm going to start deploying and using... I don't need that read me back over here. Um, yeah, we're going to use D sharp plus is the library that we're going to use to interact with discord inside of our application. Now packages are the way that we deliver extra content into .NET applications are through packages that are called NuGet packages, NuGet.org. There you go. Okay. And there's all kinds of packages out here to interact with all kinds of services, to beat, to, to interact with and, and, and use all kinds of different tools, format data however you'd like. You saw we used link to CSV previously. Today we're going to go and we're going to use, we're going to use D sharp plus for interacting with this, right? Now, actually, let's do this. There are lots of packages out here for interacting with Discord. There's a very widely distributed package called Discord.net that's being used by folks. There's Discord Rich Presence. There's an OWIN security provider for Discord. Um, all kinds of libraries for interacting with that. Okay? But we're going to use D Sharp Plus because D Sharp Plus is actually a fork of discord.net that's been tuned a little bit so that it works um, a little bit more like the rest of discord's APIs so in my mind for what I want to do I like that it aligns better with the rest of the APIs on the platform that we're going to be using so there's a very simple readme here. There's, there's instructions about how to install this if you want to use the Package Manager console in Visual Studio 2022. I can go to .NET CLI and copy that. Go back over to VS Code. Open up my terminal down here at the bottom. Okay. And I can paste in exactly that command I got. It's in B5, behind my coffee mug. And execute that and it's going to restore those packages. It downloads everything from, from NuGet for me and puts it into my project. So check this out. Here's my project file. And my project file, not only does it tell .NET that this is gonna be an EXE using .NET 6 and some other things configuring about how we're gonna use the C-sharp language, but now here's my package reference. D sharp plus version 4.1. It's all right there in this file so that .NET, the .NET command line tool, knows how to build my application. It has everything right there to interact with. So, um, all right. There's two or three of you that keep asking about writing a chatbot to interact with WhatsApp. Sorry, I'm, I'm not covering WhatsApp today. I'm focused on Discord. You can go and search for data about how to connect to WhatsApp. The techniques that I'm going to show you today, you will be able to use in both services. Okay? Um, you just need to adapt how you connect to that service. So I'm going to go back over here to my program file, and I don't need this console right line at the top here. I need to create a Discord client and there's some great documentation over here on the project website about how to get started, how to install, and there's some documentation, some example bots you can jump into. There's a tutorial you can click through that has some of the very similar screens here and this, write your first bot. There's a very, there's, look, install packages. And we're going to start writing. It, it, there's things here that you can skip because of where we are now. But we're going to create a Discord client to get things started. So let's do that. Let's create a Discord client. So I'm going to call this, let's just call this client right here at the top of the screen. 
and I'm going to say new Discord client. Now, it doesn't know what that is yet, so I'm going to control dot on this. Um, standby. Turn on screencast mode. And now I get use D sharp plus. Yes. And I need to provide that with a couple of pieces of information here. Um, there is, right, current user equal, is it? No, no. Um, come on now. I need to pass it, I'm sorry, configuration information. Yeah, there it is. New Discord configuration. That's what I was thinking. Now I should be able to do things like pass it the token. What's the token that you're using in order to connect and log in? And the token type, well, this is a token for a chat bot that we're going to connect and use. Okay. So I need to pass in a token here so that it knows how to interact with my application. Okay. So I'm just going to write my token there for now because I'm, I, I don't want to embed that token right there because that's something that's specific to, and, and could change when I reset my security authentication information and I don't necessarily want it right there. Um, there's a question here from uh, Machdal asking, can we just write the package name and version name in the CS project install from NuGet? Yes, you can. You can absolutely do that. Um, you, you may see me do that sometimes on stream where I will just hand write this into the project file or write out copy and paste because there's some things that are just one word off between the various things. Sure, you can absolutely do that. When you build for the first time, it will actually download and make those packages available uh, when you're working with that. That's right, there is no main function because I'm in uh, .NET 6 C Sharp 10 and I'm working with top level statements here. Um, you use uh, chatbots to help automate processing members. Yeah, have functionality to see who's actually playing games you can't find, exactly. All kinds of ways that you can reach out and interact with folks. Um, can, can this package support Xamarin Forms based mobile apps? Yes, it can. It works on .NET standard. You can check out the NuGet package. Go back here. So .NET standard 2, that means it'll work on .NET framework. It'll work with Xamarin and it'll work with .NET Core. And of course, .NET 6. All right. Um, we're going to need to be here and also over here. All right. So I've got my client and I actually, if I want to write it, well, let me check and catch up with things here. Uh, can I keep my co coffee cup to my left? No, I, actually I can't. There's nothing over here. So it's kind of just, I'm trying to keep it in front of me. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, let me see here. How will I be storing the token? Exactly. There's all kinds of places that you can put it. We'll take a look at that in just a little bit. Um, Philippe asks, do top-level statements work only in program CS? No. You can put top-level statements in any file that you want to create here. Um, here, let's just do down here. Console. Uh, right line. Um... Uh, Discord is connected, right? And uh, I can rename this to, uh, let's call it Foo, right? Nah, I don't want to be down in there, over here. Clear, thank you. So I can .NET run now, and it will run the application and it just says Discord is connected because I haven't actually connected yet. I haven't configured it to do things. So, um, so today I'm I'm focusing on just some of these tools to get us connected and build build a simple Discord bot. What you do with Discord after you learn this is up to you. Okay, so. Um, 
after I have a client defined, I need to define some of the things that I may want to do with it. So, um, right, if I receive a message, right, so if there's a message, what is it not message updated? No, 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 no. Is it message created? Go back to my notes. Go back to Fritz's notes. Because I've actually got... I've actually got my sample code sitting here. Let me take a look. And then I, I know where I'm going from here. Oh, uh, yeah. Come on. No, no, no. Here. And it is... There. Yeah, message created. Okay. Right. Make sure I get the... Uh, message created so I can apply now an anonymous method that allows me to say okay when a message is created on a server that this bot is connected to do something this is an event handler we saw a little bit about how to use how to use events previously well now we have an event that we want to handle. A message was created that this bot is seeing. Let's do something with it. So, let's say, right, let's do the simple ping pong interaction here, right? Um, <clears throat> if, so here I'm looking at the arguments being passed in, which are message created event args. So I've got information here about the message that's being sent. That screencast mode is too much. So there's the message. I can actually look at the text of the message and I can say, well, if that message content, right? And there's all kinds of properties of that message. I can look at who the author is, what channel on the server that came from, right? I can take actions on it, right? If I want to moderate and delete that message because somebody said something that they shouldn't have, right? Whatever it might be. Let's take a look at the content, which is an actual string. It's an actual block of text. So I can say if it starts with ping, then what I can do is I can say client, send message async, and I'm going to send... Um, I want to send, I want to send it to the current channel that it came in on. Yeah, args, that channel. And I want to send Pong. Now, I, I've got the orange underline here because that's an asynchronous method. We should await that. Send that block and wait for that to happen, to finish. But we'll release the thread here. And when it's done, we'll continue processing from here. So I've got a very simple little interaction there. Now let's actually let's actually get connected, right? Um, right? Is it? Yeah, connect async. There it is. So I will connect to Discord. And the next thing that that the demos typically show you is. Um, await task dot delay minus one, which basically says, don't do anything here forever. Just let this continue running forever. And when you think about how a bot runs, it's connected, it's always listening, it's always interacting with things. You never want it to stop. So to do that kind of makes sense. But I've, I've still got this token sitting up here that's sitting right here in my code. And man, that's 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 going to have my security officer all up in arms. What are you doing, Fritz, embedding a token in your code like that? An API key that knows how to connect to Discord. That shouldn't be in your code because when you commit this code to source control, I don't want to see it right there. So what do we do? And that's where our configuration options and our configuration features of .NET come into play. We'll take a look at this in just a little bit. Sandeep asks, is there a public repository where I can publish and promote your bots? Discord already does that for you. So, 
Yeah, command line best practices are a bit out of scope. Dependency inject the coffee. Nice. <laughs> um, let's see here. Um, command line best practices. Yeah, that are that's it, not specific to this bot. Um, so let's see. What do we have? Here? Uh, you thought I would. You thought C sharp Fritz was a package extension. It didn't click until it found out that it was actually it, it's me. That's me. I'm C sharp Fritz. Um, let me see here. Uh, do, 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 do. Discord re re uh, revokes the token if they detect it in your code in in a GitHub repo. Good move on their part, John. I did not know that. Thanks for the tip. If you embed that there in a public repository, uh, Discord will revoke it, according to John on YouTube. Thank you. Appreciate that that tip. Um, if for some reason send message async throws an exception, an exception, should it pop up in the debugger? No, because you won't have the debugger attached when this is running. So, no. They get lost somewhere sometimes. Is that your fault? There's ways to handle it. Because it's awaited here, you can certainly try catch around that and catch the aggregate exception and go down into the inner exception and actually work with it there. So, um, Alexo, I agree. Is, is await task delay minus one. I don't like that at all there. I really don't. Um, honestly, I would create a, um, a cancellation token source and pass that around, um, for what we're doing, for what they're describing in, in a lot of the samples, this is what you'll see. I, I, I would be just fine, um, creating a, uh, uh, cancellation token source. Now, a cancellation token source is a way for you to create a token, a little object, that signals whether the operation has been canceled. So, if I create a source here, what I can do down here after a message created is, right, I can say, um, while not, uh, well, I need to create the token, right, equals source. Come on now, token. And while um, I would do the connect, <clears throat> uh, while token dot, while cancellation is not requested, the wait test delay 100, right? So it's just sitting there, and you can pass then that token into other places in your application and have that that uh, token flipped, signaled, uh, or, I'm sorry, pass a reference to the source in, right? So somewhere over here, some while the application is going on over here, I can actually say source.cancel. And this block here, cancellation requested would happen, and it would stop. It would exit that loop at that point. So, things to be aware of. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it, the repository needs to be public for them to be able to detect that kind of stuff out there. Um, <laughs> thank you, Trial Mix. Appreciate the kind words. Um, yeah, real quick on creating a cancellation token, which is really the preferred way that we ask folks to interact with their code because that's, that's really... This type of interaction is much better than, than breaking, stopping, telling a thread to stop doing it this way where you're actually receiving some sort of a a piece of information that says okay stop doing this thing 
will properly release resources and better release them in a managed way so they're reclaimed. This is Visual Studio Code that I'm using today. Uh, okay, so I, I have a little message here and I wanna take care of storing that token somewhere that's a little bit more configurable that I can interact with. So let's, no, I don't wanna work on that terminal. Let's go back over here and inside my, um, my readme, I've actually got exactly the commands that I want to execute in order to start getting configuration running inside my code. Yeah, paste those. So I'm adding the extensions, Microsoft extensions, configuration binder, and also um, extensions, configuration, JSON. Now, what does this do? Look at all this goo on the screen. What does that mean, Fritz? Well, um, hang on, let me turn that off and uh, yeah that's fine back over here if I dot net run it's running in the background and I can cancel so I, it, I didn't actually have it write anything on screen so now I have my configuration tools inside my project I can start to refer to configuration and work with it to build some content for my project. So let's create a variable called config. And I want a new configuration builder. And I'll get my using statement for that. I've got a configuration builder now. And I'm going to add um, JSON file capabilities. I want it to read an app settings JSON file. And then I have an an optional flag that I can pass in to say, well, is that file required? Is it optional? True, it is optional. And I can, I can add other capabilities here, but now I have the ability to have a JSON file that contains that. Don't forget to call build at the end here so that this config is now in I configuration option. And I can reach into that configuration and pull values out of it. But first let's create that app settings JSON file right there. And I want that file to be delivered into the output of my project. Yes, I, I know it's because I'm changing the file. Uh, there we go. So I want, um, I want no changes to be made here. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna blank on this. Let me go back. To, I'm gonna cheat again and go back to my sample code, just because this is gonna be easier for me to copy. It is that right there. Okay. So this is a command for the build system that says, "Don't do anything with this file. No action for the .NET." compiler to take. This is the file I want you to update, copy it to the output directory, and preserve the newest version. So if I make a change to that file, copy it when I build to the output directory. So I've got my app settings JSON file here. Let's put some content in. And I'll just put an entry here, Discord token, and it's my token. You'll see where this is going in a second. So now down here, I can replace the call to my token with config discord token. And it'll read that token file out of my app settings JSON and put it right there. That's pretty cool. And there's other places that you can put configuration. You can put things in Azure Key Vault. You can put stuff into environment variables. You can read arguments that are passed into the application and turn those into configuration options by adding new options to your configuration builder up here. I have links for the, uh, the configuration documentation inside the, uh, the content for today. Where is it? Do, 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 do. Um, configuration information. There's Microsoft Docs we're going to get into for user secrets. 
because my token is still sitting just here in an app settings JSON file. It's just right there. That's not going to necessarily work because if I save my app settings file and add it to my GitHub repository, it's in the same folder as the rest of my code. It's still saved out there and I've got my Discord token now sitting wide open for anybody to read in my GitHub repository. And that's a bad thing, right? So, what do we do? Um, uh, yeah, Azure App Configuration is another place you can put it. Vincent, you're right, I can put configuration. Azure App Configuration turns into environment variables. So your environment variable interactions works well. Um, oh, you were in the different um, release configuration. Nice. Um, change your, your environment variable for, what is it? Oh my gosh. Uh, .NET underscore environment to development and watch it work then. But that's an environment variable you have to set. By default, it's production and production doesn't read. But we're going to show you now user secrets. So user secrets are a way for you to interact and save your configuration somewhere outside of your project file. You can move that stuff into a different location that's private to that machine and doesn't get committed to source control. So, not only do I write things into a, a secrets location, but I have to initialize it with this command, .NET user secrets init, and it puts down a file on disk hidden somewhere so that you can read values out of it when you're compiling and interacting with your application. In fact, you can see that little GUID is now right there in my file, user secrets ID. And I can add the ability for it to read and interact with the user secrets by saying add user secrets. And is that gonna work? That's not gonna work. No, it was giving me problems with this earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, optional, yes, it is optional. No, no, I, I need to give this type of program dot assembly. There it works. I have to tell it, you're getting user secrets for this assembly so it reads out that, that GUID and it's optional. It might not necessarily be there. The order that these things appear is important because the last value in wins. So I've added user secrets after the app settings file. So if there is a user secret, it's gonna override whatever's in the app settings file. So I still need this token. I wanna put it into user secrets. So let me go back over here to my Discord panel and I'm going to open up uh, where is it? Under OAuth. It's not my client's secret. It's the, there's a token hanging out here somewhere. Build a bot. There it is. The token. I'm not even going to show it. I'm going to click copy here. And inside, back over here, I can, on the command line, I can save that token by using this command. .NET user secrets set Discord token, the name of the value I want to store, and then my token. What is it that I'm writing out? So let's see if I can do this without completely doxing myself. Even if it does appear here, I'll revoke and reset the token right after this stream. Um, so .NET, right? User dash secrets. Uh, Discord token. And the new value is that. Yep, you can see it. That's okay. Um, it's user secrets set. Oh, nuts. There it goes. Okay. So now it's been saved into the secret store. And I can reference it. It's now going to be used and it will be available when this runs. It'll pick up, grab that token, and connect. And I'll be able to do this interaction. 
If I head over to that Discord panel in here, it says the bot appeared, but you see it's it's listed as offline. It's not actually connected, but the bot is joined to the server. So let's run the application now. And it should start up and get connected. Or wait a sec, I didn't tell it to connect. Uh, you gotta do that. And we'll be connected, there it is, showing me that it's connected. I go back over here and now you see the bot is showing as online. It's actually connected, it's actually doing its thing. So now if I type in the message box, ping, the super duper Fritz bot writes back, pong. Very simple, all we've done is interact with that client message. But think about all the things that you can do when you are able to inspect and see messages being created. You can interact with them. You can listen for things happening on other systems and send notifications onto servers like this, okay? Just the very basics here, and I, right? And I can certainly reach in and change that message so it's more than just Pong. Maybe, right? Uh, hey, don't ping me, and I can pass back. Uh, let me put that on another line. Right? Oh, come on now. Right? Uh, author. I don't want their email. Uh, user, username. Yeah. Right? And I'll restart it. It's connected. Hey, don't ping me, C-sharp Fritz. Okay? Easy. All kinds of things you can do with it, but we're right here at the beginning. I have a token, I have the way to connect, and I've done this very basic, getting this online and running over here. And as long as this is running, it's connected and managing and doing that interaction. Let me catch up with chat here, and then we'll start looking at some more things. I don't mind doxing myself. I'll reset that token a little bit later. Could you do this as an interface, as a class library for somebody in the implements? Yes. And we'll get into more of that later. Shouldn't that be foo now instead of program? The name of the file is foo. The type that it creates is program. Um, that's something that's generated at build time for you. Um, so. What NuGet package is you user secrets under? So the user secrets comes in right there. Microsoft extensions configuration user secrets. And the user secrets tool, the global tool for that, that is made available by default with the SDK when you install the .NET command line tools. Um, yeah, it is for development only. That's correct. When you get into production space, you're going to get values from um, environment, environment, environment variables or from um, a, a, some sort of a key vault like Azure Key Vault. So and I'm, how you work with those is just another configuration option. And I have links that, well, at least a link to the docs you see right here that you'll be able to follow and learn more about how to do that better for production. I wonder if I put an at before the username, if it'll turn it into at C sharp Fritz. Let's do it. Right? Let's do that. Uh, put that right there. Rerun it. And then let's take this and start moving things around and get a little bit more interesting with this. So back over here, it's running. And if I say ping, now it puts the at there, but it it's not activated. It's not that block of text that I can click and do something. There's there's some way to do that. And quite frankly, I'm not familiar with how to send that type of uh, message. There's It's in the documentation for the library that you can work with. Is there more spam coming through on... <laughs> wow! Wow. Uh, yep. Uh, 
<sighs> okay. Here we go. Um, all right, so I've got this method in here, and I've got some other things up here that are just they're kind of annoying. They're, they're As I want to add more features to my bot, I'm going to end up creating more and more if this, then do that types things in here, and that's really frustrating. So how can I simplify this? I mean, I've got 30-some lines in here, and a bit of this is process control around the bot starting and setting up my configuration. How can I put that little bit easier place to work with. So let's take this and I'm going to, um, yeah, let's create a new class file over here and I'm going to call this uh, fritzbot.cs and I'll put this in a namespace called, right, what did we call it? What's uh, super duper bot, super duper bot, right? Do I have that right? Yeah. Okay. And I'll create a class for this. Fritzbot. There we go. And in here, um, I'll put some sort of an initialize method. Um, and I'm going to need to take in a Discord client. And let's just call that client. All right. It doesn't know what that is. So we'll control dot and get my using statement. And now I'll start adding, um, I'll, I'll add that wire up for the message, right? When a message receives here, uh, not there, there, right? So let's move that and I'll have that happen, right? Uh, no, format document, there we go. But I really don't want it as an anonymous method here. That's kind of annoying. So let's get rid of that. Copy this. Get rid of this. And let's create a method called on message created. And I'll just control dot and generate that method. And there it is. Now in here, I can put, really? No. Was it Alt Shift F? There we go. Um, and I'm going to rename my arguments here to client and args. There we go. Now I need to make this also asynchronous. There we go. So now I've taken everything that was in that little anonymous method and I've put it in here inside this class. And I've got it wired up and I've defined how to initialize and set things up right here in this initialize method. Last step that I need is some way to stand up a Fritz bot and initialize it. Go do that thing. So what I like to do, and, and it builds off of a technique that you see folks in, AS, in the ASP.NET team do, and you'll see this in more and more of the, the .NET configuration, um, is things like this where we have these fluid configuration methods these are extension methods that aren't necessarily hanging on configuration builder so what if we could do something like this like that client.addfritzbot i want to take that discord configuration and add the fritzbot to it this is an extension method this is how we're going to spot weld we're going to add on to the discord client object the ability to add fritzbot so let's add that i'm going to i'm not going to introduce a local i'm going to create down here um a static class all extension methods must live in a static class i'm going to name this discord extensions because this is a class that's going to hold other extension methods for my Discord library that I'm going to extend and enhance. But for right now, I'm adding this one method. Um, the methods must be static, and um, it's called add fritzbot. And it receives, I know I'm not doing this right yet, uh, a Discord client, okay? And the type that I wanna return, I want to return 
the same type that I'm adding this on to. So I want to return a Discord client and I'm the this keyword says this is the this is the object that I'm adding this method to. So Discord client now has a method called add fritzbot. And the last thing that I'm going to do in this method is return the client that was passed in. So this way I can chain methods here. I can say add whatever else. Okay. And have all of my configuration loaded up in just a few statements right here without having to go and, and write tons of code right here to do those things. Let me move this into another uh, class file. So now I've got nice, smaller configuration sitting here in my startup. And really, that configuration for, well, how do you start the Fritz bot is over here. And I'm able to say, let's let's put a uh, private static Fritz bot up here, and let's put this in a namespace. Uh, namespace super duper bot. There it is. The bot, right? So I can say the bot equals new Fritz bot. And then I can say the bot dot initialize. And I have to pass into it a client. What do we got there? What are you upset about? Yep, I know. We'll make that nullable, sure. Okay. So there it is. I've got a little method that knows how to create a Fritz bot, pass in the Discord client, and initialize it. Let it do its configuration so that it knows when a message is created, this is what we're going to call. I've just created the top layer on my bot. I could put all kinds of switch case statements in here, inspections of those messages, and hand off to all kinds of different interactions. But at this time, I've got this very simple processing that now uses an extension method <clears throat> and uses that little configuration to start interacting with my bot. Um, what did I miss there? Oh, 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 it's over here. I forgot to add my using statement. There it is. Now it's running. I'll go back over here, ping it again. You can see there it is, and I'm typing. Ping and Hey, don't ping me. Fantastic. Right? Simple. We haven't we haven't really gone into some of the interactions with what you can do with the bot. But we've put some pretty nice organization in here. We learned about configuration. We learned about building an extension method to to simplify and move things somewhere else. And and make our configuration of our bot one line. It's one line here, and I can go make all the changes necessary to configure my bot here, add some tests later that all work right on this class file. How can, how can you create a custom eye configuration so a person can have more options, asks Andy. There's documentation of how to, of how to do that. <coughs> but you basically need to um, you need to return contents into the i configuration builder. There's a interface you need to adhere to. You inject in there so that it knows how to query your specific configuration. Maybe it's a database table. Maybe it's some configuration file on disk, an INI file or something. But very basic uh, interactions to how to do that. And I see we've got more spam bots coming in from YouTube. That's wonderful. I'm sorry, I can't moderate it. I've wasted too much time um, moderating YouTube. Um, so, cool. All right, we've got about five minutes left. Exactly, Philippe on YouTube says, now we can use machine learning to do something with some of those messages, right? Exactly. I've got that block of text here. I have that author, right? 
maybe I do something up here, right? Maybe I've got, uh, let's, let's create, right? Let's create a hash set, right? Of strings, right? Uh, and we'll call this um, uh, users acknowledged, right? And I'll just do new like that. And um, if, uh, right, if users acknowledged contains uh, orgs author username uh, stop bugging me, otherwise, We'll do that, right? And I'll add it into the hash set. Yep, uh, orgs, author, username, right? So it's running. Um, I see. I knew somebody was going to grab it. Um, I'll do one more here. So, ping again. Stop bugging me. All right. So, thanks so much. Yep. And that token is regenerated. So, nobody can interact with it now. Um, and we've just flushed our friend who grabbed the token and, and hopped in there. All right. So um, I'm I'm pretty happy with how we've gone through this. We've got just a few minutes left. Let me, yeah, we could do sentiment analysis. I do that on a bot that I run against Twitch on my live stream. There's so much more that we could do. Log stuff for moderators, absolutely. Without question, you can do that interaction as well. So let me head over and uh, let's wrap things up. Let's call it a day. Ugh. There we go. There we go. Um, back over to here. There we go. So, we covered a lot in, in just getting started with that chatbot. And we did the very basics of interacting with chat. There's so many things that you could do interacting with chat um, and and the text messages that, that come through, the video content that happens, all kinds of really cool stuff. Um, so try it out, take a look. There's so many things that, that can be done. It's a lot of fun when you first see these couple of things that you can do, but what I wanted you to see it with C Sharp is really how you can take what you've already learned about building just little console applications, just a couple classes and things like that, and and start to layer on now, we know configuration, we know how to interact with configuration, extension methods, event handling, and building that 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 repertoire of all right, I know how to I knew I know how to do if and switch statements so now i know how to handle an event and and i have my little bot class where i work over there in the configuration the startup is just a few lines of code around getting things running all right all the source code is available out there on on the github you can take a look on the github page once again if you're on youtube just below me here, take a look. There's a link to the GitHub repository. It is um, session 1115 in season one. If you're on Twitch, take a look. Exclamation point GitHub will get you started, get you in and point it in the right way. Your bot doesn't show up in Discord. Uh, double check that, that you had things. You have to make sure you go to that URL and join it and actually select a server that you want it to join. All right. Um, can I have a session for application InSign for logging from Visual Studio for issue analysis? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. 
Um, we are out of time, friends. It has been a lot of fun to be together with you. I answer questions in the comment area of the recording just below me here on YouTube. Check it out. Let me know if there's questions you have, if there's things that I can help you out with. I'm happy to take a look and, and respond to those at any time. All right, friends. Uh, we've had some, some good time together here this morning. Those of you that are on YouTube, check out the rest of the videos in this series. Check out the playlist, C Sharp with C Sharp Fritz. We've got videos there getting folks started with C Sharp. If you want to see the latest things that are happening around .NET, I ask you to take a look back at the playlist for .NET Conf 2021, where we announced, we published, and we released to the world .NET 6. Really good stuff. All right. Thank you so much. Check out the, the next videos here in the playlist if you're on YouTube. And now our friends on Twitch. Let's get connected. Let's, let's see who else is streaming on the big Twitch TV network that we can get connected to. We can send some love over to and see what else is cool and happening out there for folks on Twitch. I'm going to take a quick peek at what's happening. And... Um, I have a, a very short list of folks that I like to raid from the Visual Studio channel just because um, I want to make sure that folks are friendly to what we're doing over here. And I think we're going to send you over to... I'm going to send you over to somebody who's live coding with Blazor. I'm going to send you to One Lion. Let's set up that raid. Thank you so much, everybody on YouTube. Have a great rest of your day. Did I spelled it wrong. What? How did I spell it wrong? Right? Where is he? <clears throat> uh, I did spell it wrong. Look at that. Look at that. There we go. Thanks so much for tuning in. I will be back tomorrow over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash C Sharp Fritz. We'll be programming with Blazor on my channel, working with Microsoft Azure, learning, learning a little bit about RavenDB and uh, building some new features into a Blazor WebAssembly application. All right, friends, have a great rest of your day, uh, and I wish you good coding, good health, wherever you might be. Take care.